My name is Carl Peterson, and I head the Laboratory of Sensory Processing at the EPFL. My goal is to obtain a causal and mechanistic understanding of sensory perception at the level of individual neurons and their synaptic interactions within the complex neuronal networks of the mammalian brain. Simple forms of sensory perception might be viewed as somewhat abstract, learned, goal-directed sensory motor transformations. And in the lab, we study a simple behavior in thirsty, head-restrained mice. In this behavior, mice must learn to lick from a water reward spout in a one-second period immediately after a one-millisecond deflection of the C2 whisker. The striatum is an interesting brain area to investigate in this behavior because it integrates glutamatergic sensory motor input together with reward-related dopaminergic input. And when a very talented postdoc, Tanya Sippi, arrived in the laboratory, she decided she was going to make wholesale membrane potential recordings from the dorsolateral striatum, an area that's prominently and directly innervated by the primary somatosensory cortex. She found obvious task-related membrane potential dynamics in her striatal membrane potential recordings. Immediately after the one millisecond deflection of the whisker, there was an early depolarizing sensory response followed by a later secondary component. Both the early and the late depolarization was larger on hit trials when the animal licked compared to missed trials when the same stimulus did not evoke licking. The depolarization drove action potential firing in these striatal neurons and importantly, much of this activity preceded the licking output of the animal with a reaction time typically around 300 milliseconds. And so this neuronal activity could contribute to driving the goal-directed licking of the mouse. The striatum contains two very different types of striatal projection neurons. There are the so-called direct pathway striatal projection neurons that innervate the substantia nigra pars reticulata, and there is the so-called indirect pathway striatal projection neurons that innervate the external segment of the globus pallidus. These not only have very different projections, but they express many different gene products, including different dopamine receptors. We can therefore use mouse genetics to label up these pathways, and here you see experimentally the axonal innervation of the stridonigral pathway and the innervation of the globus pallidus of the indirect pathway. In the wholesale recordings that Tanya Sippi carried out, she included biocytin in the intracellular solution, and that allowed her to fill and label these cells and compare it to the genetic labeling of the different types of striatal projection neurons. And when she compared the membrane potential dynamics of direct and indirect pathway neurons, she saw that there were obvious differences. The direct pathway neurons received an early sensory input that was substantially smaller in indirect pathway neurons. That early component lasts about 50 milliseconds, and at later times, the two types of striatal projection neuron depolarize similarly. This early component in the direct pathway could therefore contribute a go signal to initiate licking. In order to test that directly, Damien Lepre and Sylvain Crochet introduced channel rhodopsin into the direct and indirect pathways. They trained the mice as before in the whisker detection task. Once the animal had learned that task, they then began to introduce optogenetic stimulation of either the direct or indirect pathway. And what they found was that optogenetic stimulation of direct pathway neurons drove licking, substituting for whisker stimulation, whereas optogenetic stimulation of the indirect pathway failed to substitute. The excitation that we see in the direct pathway neurons is therefore sufficient to drive licking behavior and could contribute a go signal for task performance. If we now step back and look at the sensory motor circuits, we think that the whisker input is signaled via the thalamus to the neocortex 
the neocortex then provides glutamatergic input to the striatum, and in particular, we think that the direct pathway striatal projection neurons receive an early sensory response. The output of the direct pathway is to inhibit substantia nigra pars reticulata, and so the brief excitation that we see here in the direct pathway inhibits substantia nigra neurons. These are tonically active GABAergic neurons that normally inhibit brainstem motor nuclei. They receive an inhibitory signal from the direct pathway, and that then gives rise to a GO signal here at the output. There are also other more complex circuits that could contribute to late, long-lasting processing in the brain, and we're very intrigued about the role of dopaminergic input to the striatum that could be involved in learning, perhaps playing a role at governing synaptic plasticity at the cortical striatal synapse. And that's the subject for ongoing research in the laboratory.